Clothing manufacturers use a wear testing machine to measure different fabrics' ability to withstand abrasion. The wear of the material is measured by weighing the clothing after it has been through the wear testing machine. A manufacturer wants to determine if there is a difference between the average weight loss among four different materials. The experiment is done by using four samples of each kind of material. The samples were tested in a completely randomized order. The weights are listed below. Use the data below, the Kruskal Wallace H test, and a 1% significance level to determine if at least one fabric is significantly different from the others. So here's our data, and it comes from a completely randomized design experiment. Normally we would analyze that with the ANOVA CRD experiment. So this is the non-parametric version of that test. It's the Kruskal Wallace H test, but it doesn't need the requirement of normality underneath it to work. So let's go ahead and work it out. The first thing we want to do is express this claim. It says uh, use a 1% significance level to determine if at least one fabric is significantly different from the others. So I've gone ahead and written that, written that claim down directly from the problem just so we'd have it there. Save us a little time on the writing. Okay, so there is at least one fabric is significantly different from the others. Now, from there we want to express HO and HA. Now, if you remember the completely uh, randomized design ANOVA procedure that we learned earlier, we would have, for example, mean A is equal to mean B is equal to mean C. Well, same kind of idea for our HO for this problem, except for we're not going to be talking about the mean. Because it's a non-parametric procedure, we're going to talk about the median. So the median for fabric A is equal to the median where for fabric B is equal to the median where for fabric C is equal to the median where for fabric D. So there's four of them because there are four different types of materials. And then from there we have the HA it was actually the same as the claim in this situation. So the classic HA is that at least one treatment is significantly different from the others. So we're just going to basically write that down. At least one fabric is dot dot dot. I'm going to dot 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 because it's the same as the claim and so you just want to have it expressed there so as a reminder what HA actually is. Okay, now from there what we want to do is come up with a data step. Now the data step is going to involve us ranking all the data. So we want to rank all the data. So we're going to rank all the data first, then find the rank totals, find the rank totals for each fabric. So what we mean by that, let's take a look at the data real quick and we'll talk about what we mean by that. I've actually written the data down on another sheet of paper just so we can use that as a basis for um, working out our problem, right? So. What I want to do here when it, as we do this problem is I want to basically just look at the data here and I want to say, okay, we have four fabrics, A, B, C, D. I'm going to treat them all as if they're one giant sample of numbers and rank them like that. So I won't rank them just in among their columns. I'll rank the entire set of data, you know. So I could have, for example, the lowest value here, you know, the highest value over here and so on and so forth. I'll just put numbers next to them to represent their ranks. So I rank the data as if it's all one big data set. But then when I go back to total up the ranks for each fabric, I'll just focus on what are the ranks for fabric A, what ranks did the fabric B items get, what ranks did the fabric C get, so on and so forth. And I'll have individual rank totals for each group. And then from there, I'm just gonna make a mental note of how many values were in each column, right? And I'll use that in my formula afterwards to calculate my test stat. So the first step we have to do is to rank all the data. So let's do that now. Okay, so while we're ranking the data, what we want to do is just look at the simple idea, you know, which number comes first, which number comes next, so on and so forth. If we have ties, we'll average the ranks like we've done in the past. So I don't see anything else in the one, so I know that this is going to be rank one. Okay, now obviously all the other numbers here look like they're in the twos. So let's find something that's like 2.1. Do we see a 2.1 anywhere? I don't see that. How about a 2.2? Well, here's 2.20, so that would have to be next, right? So 2.2, anything else that's 2.2? I see 2.28, 2.25, 2.25, right? So let's go ahead and find the low, anything lower than 2.25? I don't think so. We're, so we're gonna give that three and four. Notice how they're the same, so I'm gonna circle those to remind myself I have to go back and adjust them afterwards, right? After we'll adjust them. Then is there any 2.6s? No, but there are 2.8s. 
So we'll give that three, four, then we'll have five and six, right? But again, these are special because they're tied. So I'm just gonna put a box around them to remind me that I'll have to go back and fix that later. Now, anything in the 2.2s left? No, how about the 2.3s? Well, I see a 2.38, uh, 2.31, and I think the 2.31 is the next one. So let's do that as seven, then I think this will be eight, and then this should be nine, right? I think we're done with all the 2.3s. Okay, how about anything in the 2.4s? Well, here's a 2.4, so that'll be 10, right? And then it looks like 11, right? Now, I'm gonna put a little dot here to indicate that those have to be adjusted too because those are a tie again, right? 10 and 11 are tied. How about 12? Anything else in the 2.4s? No. So, anything in the 2.5s? Yes, this will be 12. Anything in the 2.6s? Yes, this will be 13. Okay, anything in the um, 2.7s? Yes, so this will be 14, then 15, then 16. Okay, now let's handle the ties. For the ties, what we wanna do is we wanna go forward and say, okay, look, three and four, they're both circled, so we have to average those two. That's seven divided by two is three and a half. So we're gonna call this 3.5 instead, and call this 3.5. All right, then we'll go on to look at the other ones, the ones in the boxes. Again, there's only two of them, we average them, that's 11 divided by two, we get 5.5. So we're gonna change this to 5.5 and change this to 5.5. And then here, same thing, we have 10 and 11, and again, there's only two that are tied, but again, we have to average them, so 10 plus 11 gives us 21, divided by two is 10 and a half. So we'll do 10.5, and here we'll do 10.5. Okay, so good, now we have that. Our next step is to get our totals for the problem. So let's add together all of these columns. So one, one by one, we'll get the total for A, the total for B, C, and D. Okay, so we'll have one plus nine plus two plus 3.5. And when we're done, we get 15.5. So the rank total for A is 15.5. Let's get the rank total for B. It's 12 plus 15 plus 16 plus 14. We get 57. So the rank total for B is 57. All right, let's do this other one, 10.5 plus 13 plus 7 plus 5.5. We get the answer 36. So the rank total for C is 36. And lastly, the rank total for D. Well, it'll be 8 plus 10.5 plus 5.5 plus 3.5. And that's our answer 27.5. Okay. So now that we have these totaled up, let's just talk briefly about one idea here. Um, just the broad strokes of the test, the idea is pretty simple. If one of these had a higher wear amount, right? So if there's um, if there's an indication that one of them had a, a, a lower weight, for example, a significantly lower weight, its ranks would then be smaller, right? Because the low numbers get the low ranks, and so its rank total would be the smaller one. And so if this is significantly showing more wear than all the others, its rank total would be significantly small next to the others, right? Or for example, we just wanted to show that rank, that the fabrics A and B are different from one another. You might say, well, gee, this has a very high rank total, which means these fabrics weighed the most after the wear testing. These fabrics weighed the least, you can tell by the ranks, right? Much higher rank total, much smaller rank total. This must mean that fabric A wore more than fabric B. Is it significantly different? Well, that's what we're gonna do in this test. We're gonna figure that out by running our hypothesis test to see if there's a significant difference between um, at least one of these fabrics and the rest. Okay, so now as usual, once we've manipulated the data and come up with things like our rank totals, we're ready to form the test statistic. Now the test stat in this problem is a little bit complicated, but it's just a formula, so you just plug in the numbers to it. Let's write down the formula. The formula has the symbol H for it, so it's H is equal to 12 over N times N plus one times the rank total for the first sample squared over n1, the number of values in the first sample, plus the rank total for the second sample squared over n2, the number of values in the second sample, plus dot dot dot, plus the rank total for the kth sample squared 
over n sub k, the number of values in the last sample. And then you subtract from that total 3 times n plus 1. Okay, so this is the formula. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see what we get. So we'll have 12 over n times n plus 1. So how many values did we have? Well, we had four columns of four values each, so I count 16 values then. So it'll be 16 times 17, because n plus 1 is 17 then, times. The ring total for the first group was 15.5. We'll square that and divide by the number of values in there, which was 4. Plus, the ring total for the second group is 57 squared, divided by 4, plus 36 squared, divided by 4, right? Plus 27.5 squared, divided by 4. Close it up and do minus 3 times 16 plus 1, or 17. All right, now let's work that out and see what we get. So we're going to have 12 divided by, use a parenthesis here, it'll be 16 times 17 for the fractional part, right? Then times, and use parentheses here, we have 15.5 squared divided by 4 plus 57 squared divided by 4 plus 36 squared divided by 4 plus 27.5 squared divided by 4. Close that up and then do minus 3 times 17. So it's a little bit of work to type it all in, but when we're done, we get the answer that h is equal to 10.119. So that's your test stat. h is equal to 10.119. All right, now once you have that test stat, our next step is to compare it against the critical value. So let's get a new sheet of paper out so we can have room to do that step. Okay, so for our critical value, we have to realize that this h statistic is actually distributed as a chi-squared random variable. So, we're going to draw the chi-squared shaped curve, or it has that long right tail on it. Our test is a right-tailed test, and what we're going to do is we're going to reject the null hypothesis if we landed on the number line past the shaded region that I've drawn. Now, we're looking for the critical value that begins that region where we begin to reject the null hypothesis. That critical value is a chi-squared value. It has, it has a alpha in the tail, and it has degrees of freedom k minus 1. Remember, k is the number of treatments. In our case, this is going to work out to be chi-squared, our alpha for the problem, if you look back at it, it was 1%, so we'll use 0.01 and the degrees of freedom was k minus 1, so in this case it would be 4 minus 1, or 3. Remember we had a, b, c, d treatments. Take away 1, you have 3 treatments. All right, so now we're going to go to our chi-squared table. We're going to look in the 0.01 row, and under 3 degrees of freedom, we're going to find the uh, chi-squared critical value that we'll put right here on a curve. Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table looking up 0.01 with 3 degrees of freedom and we get the answer 11.3449. Okay, so our critical value turned out to be 11.345. Now let's compare that against our H test stat, which is 10.119. This value, the 10.119, clearly lands in the do not reject area. So we're going to say do not reject HO, therefore do not support HA. All right, and when we look at our claim, we say that our HA is essentially the same as the claim, so we can say that our wording should say this, the sample data does not support the claim. So we're going to say the sample data does not support the claim. Okay, what you want to do maybe is perhaps look back at the um, test that we ran when we did it with the ANOVA CRD because we did the same problem with that and see if we were able to reject the null hypothesis. I suspect we were able to reject it there, but the ANOVA CRD experiment is a more powerful test, so that uh, difference in the outcome could be due to the fact that this test is less powerful. That's it.